Yo, what it do? SRT Gang, it's your boy with the fat swaggy reacts, and we are back with another reaction video, man. And shout out to Twisted Minds, bro. We're gonna get into a Twisted Minds video today, man. Today, we're gonna be checking out um the boy who grew up to kill 35 people in 24 hours hours now this is about to be something crazy bro like it's i think it's almost at like five million views or something bro. it has to be good it has to be good bro like share comment subscribe i mean i know y'all hear that that's bella eating i'm telling y'all she always do this when i do a video like like right now, like it never gets old bella what's up with you b yeah all right like why you always eating like, the food been there for a whole 30 minutes. You want to eat now when I start recording. Yeah, that's right. Get in your cage. That's right. Like, share, comment, subscribe, gang. Gang, like you guys like scary content. Trying to drop one of these every night for y'all, man. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Join the gang. Share the video. Let's get this video to 300 likes, man. I ain't finna hold y'all up. Like, let's see what he did in 24 hours to kill 35 people. Let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. If you think the snakes, spiders, and sharks are the deadliest things in Australia, just wait until you learn more about today's killer, who only needed one day to take the lives of 35 people and destroy the lives of countless others. Welcome or welcome back to Twisted people. Minds. My name is James, and today we're going to be unraveling the explosive story behind Martin Bryant. The most notorious mass murderer in Australia's history, and a man responsible for one of the worst single person mass shootings the world has ever seen the Port Arthur Massacre. It's been 25 years mm. since this tragic event, which has since resulted in the Australian state placing extensive restrictions on gun laws. And a buyback scheme was initiated in which over 643,000 firearms were handed back, which cost the government around $350 million. Mm. The country no longer allows adults to purchase any type of firearm without a license. Wow, bro. Martin Bryant was born on the 7th of May, 1967, at the Queen Alexandra Hospital in Hobart, Tasmania. The first child of Maurice and Carlene Bryant the couple couldn't possibly know the horrors that were to happen because of their son. A violent and disruptive child, Martin was severely bullied at school. This led Martin to becoming the bully to children younger than him and weaker than him. This behavior led to some quick punishment, with Martin being- And that never fails, bro. It's always the people that's like getting bullied that always go in these crazy shooters like this, bro. Like, 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 it's always the bullying, bro. The bullying. Getting bullied. Suspended from Newtown Primary School in 1977 at just the age of 10 years old. He would soon undergo the first of many psychological assessments. Here it was discovered that Martin liked to kill and torture animals and that what? he had an IQ of only 66, making him legally mentally disabled. Uh... The following year, in 1978, Martin returned to school with greatly improved behavior, but it wasn't to last. After failing to befriend any of his classmates, he returned to bullying the younger children. When he was just 14 years old, Martin got his first firearm. It was an air rifle. Bro, rifle. at 14 years old, bro. Like, this is why... Uh, so he was pretty much the reason that, that they started doing, I'm guessing, like, legal line. Like, you gotta have a license and shit now. At 14... But then again, I mean, like, again, like, it's in uh, Australia. Like, it's not in, in the U.S., and so they might have different laws. But that's crazy to me, bro. A 14-year-old can go in there and, and, and purchase a gun. That's crazy, bro. His father had bought for him as a present. The young boy would carelessly fire oh, the no. weapon. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, they just said his father purchased it for him. Okay, never mind. But still, though, at 14 that his father had bought for him as a present. The young boy would carelessly fire the weapon from a distance at drivers passing by and shoot down birds. This cruel Yo, habit of killing innocent animals earned the boy the nickname Silly Martin. 
with children saying that he had no sense and no feeling for other living creatures. High school, what? And that's exactly like, what's wrong with our kids today, bro. Like, like don't nobody believe in, sh in, 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 in just fighting no more, bro. It's shoot, 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 shoot. It's like, bro, like, like, come on, man. Like, God, this is crazy right here, bro. Saying that he had no sense and no feeling for other living creatures. High school wasn't much better for Martin as he was transferred to a special education unit at Newtown High School in 1980 to help with his learning disabilities. In 1983, after he left school, the boy was assessed for a disability pension. In his assessment, the psychologist wrote that the young man could not read nor write, although he was able to guard it. His parents' efforts prevented further deterioration and due to the possibility that their son could be schizophrenic, they faced a bleak future with him. Through this assessment, Martin was awarded the disability pension, although he also worked as a handyman and a gardener. His mental disabilities are possibly one of the main reasons he had such a difficult time connecting with others, and what ultimately led to one of the most horrific mass shootings in the world. It's crazy, one of the mass shootings in the world. For the next five years, Martin remained at home with his parents, doing odd handyman jobs locally. In early 1987, when he was 19 years old, Martin finally made his first real connection with another person, a 54-year-old woman called Helene Mary Elizabeth Harvey. She was an heiress to a share in the Tattersall's lottery fortune. Martin came across Miss Harvey whilst looking for new customers for his lawn mowing service. Miss Harvey, who lived with her mother Hilza, ended up befriending the unusual man, which led to him becoming a regular visitor to the woman's neglected mansion. Whenever he visited, Martin would help the older woman with chores, such as mowing the lawn and helping to feed her 14 dogs and 40 cats. With this Damn, newfound friend- 14 dogs and 40 cats? That's crazy. Yo, nah, bro. Bella, I love you, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna never have thirteen of you, bro. I, 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 <laughs> like one of you is good enough for me. On and helping to feed her fourteen, 14 dogs, dogs and forty, dogs cats. And 40 With cats. With this newfound friendship. It seemed like things might be looking up for the eccentric. With the amount of animals in the house and the fact that the two elderly women couldn't clean up after them properly, it was no surprise when a neighbor reported Miss Harvey to the health authorities for the mess that was her home. Upon inspection, medics found that both Miss Harvey and her mother were in need of urgent hospital treatment mm. due to the unsanitary conditions that they had been living in. Unfortunately though, it was too late for Hilza Harvey, and she died at the age of 79. With her mother gone, Miss Harvey decided to invite Martin to live with her in the mansion, to which he happily accepted. Though it was never proven, some people believe that the couple's relationship went beyond that of just two friends. The two started spending large amounts of Miss Harvey's money, including- Well, he over there clapping the, the cougar cheeks. That's tough. Just two friends. The two started spending large amounts of Miss Harvey's money, including buying more than 30 new cars in less than three years. They also what? went shopping daily and ate out at restaurants. With all of that money, his first real friend, and a chance to be normal, you might think that Martin would finally start to be better. Right. But you'd be wrong. At around the same time that the future killer moved in with the lottery heiress, he was reassessed for his pension disability, and the outcome was even worse than before. The psychiatrist attached a note to his assessment, which read, Father protects him from any occasion which might upset him as he continually threatens violence. Martin tells me he would like to go around shooting people. It would be unsafe to allow Martin out of his parents' control. You would think that with such a shocking and disturbing yo, evaluation. Wait, hold up, wait, so he pretty much sat here and told this lady, look, yo, I don't wanna kill people. Like, like who, who wakes up and says that? Like, yo, I just feel like killing some people. Like, why not? Like, it's just like normal or something in Argentina. That Martin would be taken to a mental health facility to be monitored. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case, and so, Although he didn't live with his parents anymore, they were always close by to keep an eye on him. In 1991, Miss Harvey decided to buy a 29-hectare farm called Torresville in the small township of Copping. 
Both she and Martin moved into the new house together, to the displeasure of their neighbors, who disapproved of their relationship. Not only did they not like the relationship, but all of the locals were very wary of this new and unusual man. Late at night, he would roam around the neighborhood, firing his air rifle at dogs when they barked at him. He would also nice. fire it at tourists as they stopped to buy Yo, apples come at on, a stall bro. on the highway. Come on, bro. Like, this is ridiculous at this point. Why are you shooting innocent bystanders, bro? Shooting in here at dark. But again, like, like, like he's mentally unstable from what y'all be saying, right? So why would y'all even put, let him allow, never mind, to have a gun? <laughs> Excuse me, y'all, but that's crazy to me, man. He's just shooting innocent bus, just shoot at innocent bystanders, dogs. He would also fire it at tourists as they stopped to buy apples at a stall on the highway. Not signs of a mentally stable man. It was no wonder why people tried to avoid him at that all costs, sign. despite his efforts at befriending them. On the 20th of October, 1992, Miss Harvey had passed away. Although the case is still a bit dubious as to how her death actually occurred. The story goes that she and Martin were traveling in the car together with Miss Harvey's two dogs when it suddenly veered onto the wrong side of the road and hit an oncoming car head on. Ace. Miss Harvey and her two dogs were instantly killed and Martin suffered severe neck and back injuries. Police investigated his potential role in the incident, as he had been known. Well, I'm saying though, like he just said that it that it suddenly just was just on the other side of the road. No, it, uh, probably a, a a fight probably occurred or or some shit. She swerved over there and then, but her and the two dogs instantly died. Instantly, well, he just you know just had certain wounds and broken like a neck and back injury that's it but they lost their lives instantly though i feel like he probably shot them Honestly. police investigated Honestly. his potential role in the incident as he had been known to lunge for the steering wheel whilst the car was moving he had caused miss harvey to crash three times already by doing this See miss harvey saying? had been so fearful of martin that she had even confided in her neighbors that he was the reason why she couldn't drive faster than 37 miles per hour. Although police did investigate him, Martin told them it was the dogs roaming around freely which caused the crash, no. and he was subsequently no longer seen as a no, suspect. Hell no. After her death, Martin I'm not buying that. Hell no, I'm not buying that. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I ain't buying that one. Martin was named the sole beneficiary of Miss Harvey's will and came into possession of assets totaling more than $550,000. However, because of Martin's low IQ, he wasn't able to look after his own finances, and so his mother applied for and was granted a guardianship order to place Martin's assets under the management of public trustees, which ended up being his father. Wow. Wow. But now the, the father the certainly passed. stop there. After Miss Harvey's death, Martin went back to live with his mother whilst his father looked after the farm that his son had inherited. It was around this time that his father, Maurice Byron, tried to buy a small bed and breakfast near Port Arthur. However, before he could get his finances in order, the building was bought by another couple, David and Nolene Martin. Martin tried to buy the business off of the couple, but they refused. In the months that followed, his father, Maurice Byron, fell into a deep depression, which he often blamed Martin for. And on the 16th of August, 1993, divers found his body in the lake of the property with a diving weight belt around his neck. This would later wow. prove to be one of the big things that pushed Martin over the edge. The death was ruled as a suicide, although there are those who believe that Martin actually killed his father so that he was he able to money. access his money. Exactly, which... exactly. He, he killed his father to get the money. But again, he's mentally unstable to financially, uh, you know, own the money. Like, it's just like, it's not going to work. So he's going to try to kill off anybody he can to try to get that money. But they're slowly, like, uh, this shit is crazy, bro. This is crazy. You can't like... that Martin actually killed his father so that he was able to access his money, which his father had financial guardianship over. Right. In the aftermath of his father's death, Martin inherited his five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, 
which Miss Harvey had left for him, as well as $250,000 from his father. Now that he was alone, Martin's unusual and eccentric personality started showing through more and more. He was often seen sporting a gray linen suit, a cravat, lizard skin shoes, and a Panama hat, and would try to talk to random strangers, telling them that he had a well-paying career. As his mental health declined and his need for companionship grew, Martin would often go on multiple trips overseas just so that he could talk to people on the plane. Forced to be polite, people would have to talk to him. However, they still felt that he was incredibly creepy. But this was not enough to satisfy his dire need for friends, and his mental health got even worse. In late 1995, Martin became suicidal after deciding that he had had enough. I just felt more people were against me. When I tried to be friendly toward them, they just walked away, he said in an interview. In his loneliness, Martin quickly turned to alcohol, and in the six months prior to the Port Arthur massacre, his consumption increased exponentially. According to Martin, he first thought of the plan for Port Arthur four to 12 weeks before it took place, and based it off the Dunblane massacre, which had happened in Scotland, UK, only one month prior to Martin's attack. At some point during the years leading up to the horrendous attack, Martin had managed to legally buy himself an AR-10 semi-automatic rifle, an AR-15 rifle, an L1A1 self-loading battle rifle, and a USAS-12 automatic shotgun. That's crazy. He also visited the Port Arthur historic Bruh. site multiple times in the months leading up to the tragic event and bought a large sports bag which he said needed to be strong enough to hold large amounts of ammunition. It seemed that Martin was determined to go through with his plan. Yo, like he literally got everything that he need. He got he got the guns, he got the big ass bag, and pretty sure he has plenty of ammo. Like this kid was really about to go on a killing spree. You know, this is crazy. He already got two bodies already. This shit is about to be crazy, bro. Oh my God. On the 28th of April, 1996, Martin put his plan in action. He was unusually awoken at 6 a.m. by his alarm clock. During interviews after the massacre, his girlfriend of the time and his remaining family said that it was strange as he had never used the alarm clock That's before. Crazy. At around 9.45 a.m., after his girlfriend had left for the day, Martin left his home and headed toward Port Arthur, along with all of his weapons and his bag full of ammo. By 11.45 a.m., he had arrived at the Seascape Bed and Breakfast, the very one that his father had been unable to buy. Martin apparently believed that the owners, the Martins, had deliberately bought the property to hurt his family and blame them for his father's depression, which what? ultimately led to his death. An act he decided that they would pay for with their lives. Martin fatally shot the Martins in the guest room of their house before making his way to Port Arthur. They were the first two victims of his devastating massacre. Once at Port Arthur, Martin went into the Broad Arrow Cafe. So there's four victims. Were they trying to say that he was the first one? Well, I'm like, they was the first two of the massacre start. But I think, I, I think it started with the other two, with the, uh, with the lady and his father. But it, but it probably wasn't him, but I think it was. Honestly, bro, I really think it was. So to me, it's four bodies. Devastating massacre. Once at Port Arthur, Martin went into the Broad Arrow Cafe, carrying his large blue sports bag. He ordered a meal and made small talk with the tourists in the small shop, acting as if he was just another visitor on a day out. Unfortunately, his plans were much more sinister. After finishing his meal, Martin moved toward the back of the cafe, which had around 60 to 70 guests in it at the time, and set up a video camera on an empty table. He then took out his AR-15 Wait, hold up, wait, 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 wait. So he sat here and recorded, like, the shootings, when he was shooting over here, not shooting people. He, he, he recorded it on the, what the, yeah, bro. Camera this on dude is crazy. Table. He this then dude is took crazy. out his AR-15 semi-automatic rifle and started firing oh into the crowd God, of innocent people. Oh Within God. only 15 seconds, the cold-blooded killer had fired 17 shots, killing 12 people and injuring another 10. Martin then walked toward the gift shop, where people had tried to hide, 
and fired 12 more times, killing another eight people and wounding two more. Oh, oh my God, bro. You sound like a bell. Look at that man running here. Yeah. Don't touch the gun building right here. Outside of the cafe, a group of people had gathered, believing the gunshots to be part Yo! of an act in play. Martin took this opportunity to refill his ammo and leave the cafe, only to callously shoot into the crowd in the car park. Oh. There's somebody going crazy shooting people. Yo, bro. There he is. He's over there. I can't believe it. Martin then got into his car and drove away, leaving four more people dead and six more injured. Only 300 meters down the road, 36-year-old Nanette Meekark was walking with her two daughters, six-year-old Alana Meekark and three-year-old Madeline Meekark. Martin saw the family as he drove and pulled over. Not knowing what had just happened down the port, Nanette had no idea how dangerous the man was. In the blink of an eye, Martin shot and killed Nanette and Madeline, who she was carrying in her arms. Alan oh my God, bro. Oh my God, dog. Shot and, oh my God, the babies, bro. The babies, the baby, the baby. I mean, everyone's life is just important as the kids, bro, but the kids, bro, like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. God, bro, this shit pisses me off every time I hear something Shot like this, Shot and man. killed Nanette and Madeline, who she was carrying in her arms. Alana tried to run away, however, in an act of true heartlessness. Martin chased after her and killed her with a single shot. Cont I can't, uh, yo, oh my God, bro. And and again, bro, like, like, whatever comes to this guy, he deserves it, bro. Like, bro, I don't have no sympathy for this nigga at all like uh, bro like this is crazy bro you literally heartlessness martin chased after her and killed her with a single shot continuing with his rampage martin stole a gold bmw after killing all four of its occupants he then drove a short distance down the road and pulled up alongside a white toyota with a couple inside he took out one of his weapons and ordered the male occupant of the car to get into the boot of the bmw before then shooting and killing the female driver. At around 2.10 in the afternoon, the mass murderer returned to the Seascape guest house, set the stolen car on fire, and took his hostage inside, where the bodies of the Martins still lay. During this time, two police officers had been called about the roadside murders, tried to approach Martin, however, he opened fired on them, causing them to hide in a ditch and become pinned down. It wasn't until around 9 p.m. that a special operations group of the Tasmania police team arrived on the scene. They rescued the pinned down officers and for the next 18 hours, a tense standoff between Martin and the police took place. At first, the police tried to negotiate with the killer, but it was cut short when the battery on Martin's phone ran out. His only demand, had been that he wanted to be transported to an airport in an army helicopter. During negotiations, Martin ended up killing his hostage, bringing the total number of people killed in his monstrous rampage to 35, whilst a further 23 were injured. The next morning, in a last ditch attempt to escape, Martin set fire to the guest house and tried to get away amidst the confusion. This didn't work and instead, the killer was captured and taken to Royal Hobart Hospital to have his burns treated, which he received in the fire. He was kept under heavy guard the entire time. Yo, it's like, this is crazy, bro. After his arrest, Martin was held in custody without the chance of bail. Whilst he was awaiting trial, he was examined by court-appointed psychiatrist Ian Sale, who believed that Martin possibly suffered from a mixture of conduct disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity, and Asperger's syndrome. Not that that excused the horror that he had just committed. Eventually, Martin was judged fit to stand trial, which happened on the 7th of November, 1996. Initially, the mass murderer pleaded not guilty but his court-appointed lawyer, John Avery, later convinced him to change his mind and plead guilty to all charges. Two weeks later, Martin was given 35 consecutive life sentences, one for each victim killed in his attack. He was also given an additional 1,652 years in prison for attempted murder and grievous physical harm to numerous people. 
The sentence. So I mean, I'm guessing the death penalty wasn't. Well, no, I'm pretty sure that it was. It it, it existed at that time in the '90s. So it's like, why not the death penalty? A person like this just need to go ahead and get the death penalty, bro. Just let him rot in his own sorrows, bro. Like. Come on, man. Attempted murder and grievous physical harm to numerous people. The sentence Wait, innocent was issued people. with no chance of parole. The first of its kind. So it's safe to say that he's never getting out. Throughout his imprisonment, the once formidable killer attempted to take his own life on eight separate occasions. See that? The and, and like he did trying to take the coward way out as far as taking his own life. No, bro. Like you, you, you can't, like you cast all this, this, well, all these deaths, so you need to sit here and just reflect on everything that you did in your life, bro. And just don't try to, like, take your way out by, by like, you know, killing yourself, bro. That's the coward way, bro. You're a coward. Incredible killer attempted to take You're his own life on eight separate occasions. The latest being in 2007, when he tried to slit his own throat with a razor blade, forcing him to be briefly hospitalized before being returned to prison. In recent exclusive interviews, Martin has been documented to have become severely overweight as he refused to join in on exercise in the prison courtyard. He has also been noted to have declined even more mentally to the point where he is willing to trade sexual favors for chocolate. As of 2021, the unremorseful mass murderer is being housed in the maximum security Risden prison. Wow, bro. Wow, bro. Aftermath. Because of the weapons that Martin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at all these guns. Look at all these. Bro, there's no way. This, there's no way these are all his guns. There's no way. Because of the weapons that Martin used in the massacre, along with the fact that he was able to legally and easily purchase the guns despite his history of violence, the Australian government decided that some serious reforms were needed in terms of their gun laws. The legal ownership and use of self-loading rifles, self-loading shotguns, and pump-action shotguns were either banned or heavily restricted. And a buyback scheme was initiated in which over 643,000 firearms were handed back, which cost the government around $350 million. Since the Port Arthur massacre, there have been many conspiracy theories behind what actually happened that day. Some people believe that it was a setup by the Australian government so that they could enact stricter gun laws, as there had been a number of mass shootings before the Port Arthur one took place. Others believe that Martin wasn't actually the shooter, as witness descriptions what? didn't match his appearance. These are just some of the theories that people have come up with. However, none have been proven to be true. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. Yo. That was the case of Martin Bryant. And why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen? Hold up, boy. Like, this is says the father who killed his entire family. Bro, listen, like, if y'all want me to react to that one, like, let me know. Because that seems like this is going to be crazy. But this one right here, with this boy right here, oh, yeah. Like, this dude was on a whole nother level, bro. Killed 35 people. Like, bro, how do you guys feel about the gun, gun laws? I mean, again, again, in 96, I was sick. So it's like, I have no idea, like, what the gun laws like was back then over there in Argentina. But you guys can let me know if any fans are over there that's watching this video, man. Tell me how you guys feel about this video, man. This was crazy, bro. Cause I, like, I really feel like he had like 37 bodies plus, like, like they said, like 23 injured or some shit like that. Like, that's crazy to me, bro. He almost had like 80 bodies, bro. That, like, that's crazy to me, bro. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Like, tell me how you guys feel about this video, man. Um... Also, just let me know um, like what else to react to from Twisted Minds. This was a crazy, crazy one right here, bro. Like, the dude is crazy, and he definitely is where he needs to be. I feel like he should have got the death penalty, but it is what it is. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Get this video to 300 likes, and we're going to spin the block once again on Monday, man. And SRT Gang, I am out this thing, man. Let's get it.